for another opportunity today, dear Lord. Thank you for keeping us, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all the people we pray for, dear Lord. Be with the bereaved families, dear Lord. Just touch, dear Lord, as only you can touch. Continue to keep your arms around us. Lord, now anoint us one more time in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We are back again. It's another week. And we are still in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. We are on the 23rd chapter, verses 23 through 35, the book of Acts. Praxis in the Greek, the extraordinary acts of exemplary men, these men of God, full of the fire and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our subject this afternoon, it's going to be very different than what we normally would have come from, but the Bible, the Lord has put us in the book of Acts, and we're going to stay in the book of Acts. So here in the 23rd chapter, verses 23 through 35, and we're going to take our subject from verse 25, and we're just going to talk about the letter, the letter, the letter. This is a very interesting part of Acts because you don't hear people talk about it much anymore, maybe Sunday school periodically or something, but here it is. This particular part of this chapter, of this 23rd chapter, speaks to the legalistic part of the New Testament. It's a very interesting part. Come, let us go there. Here in this 23rd chapter, verse 23, and it called for the two, where we left off that last week, and he called for two centurions, saying, prepare 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea at the third hour of the night, verse 24, and provide mounts to set Paul on and bring him safely to Felix the governor. So you have all these people, these soldiers that come together to protect the Apostle Paul. Now here's one interesting thing note a uh, theologian wrote that preachers today still need to be protected. So you have your pastor, you're supposed to love your pastor. He's the angel of the church. You're supposed to pray for him, pray for his safety, pray for his well-being, pray for him, his strength as he comes forth to labor and to deliver God's word to you. Pray that no one would hurt him or harm him in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Pray for his welfare. Pray for his finances. Pray for his strength. We're supposed to pray for him. We're supposed to keep our arms around our pastors, around our preachers. Amen. Pray for them. And here's one more thing. A lot of people say, well, I don't like what that preacher say. I'm going to get back at him. No, that's God's job. You don't touch my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You're not supposed to harm the pastor or the preacher in any way, shape, or form. If there's a problem, God will deal with the problem. He doesn't need you to deal with it. He needs for you to be a, a, an obedient servant and to pray for the man of God, to lift them up, to pray for him, to keep him in these times in which we live in. Here we are. Here we are. Paul uh, is put on a mount so that he can ride to safety to Felix, the governor. Now, the person that sends this and said, um, verse 25, he wrote a letter to the following manner, Claudius Lystrius. Now, Claudius would, because, how can I put this to you? Uh, because he was a subordinate to Felix, the governor, he was required to write a letter and to write something saying why they had to go to Felix. Um, it would have been required by law. By law, Felix could not accept Paul or a situation by word. There had to be a legal document. One of the beautiful things about this particular, and I'm going to pick up my Bible frequently, is here's a letter that appears in the Bible. And what a lot of people don't understand and don't know about the, the about church and church history, that a lot of the documents that were sent out in early church 
history were legal documents uh, that were sent out. And here's an example of one that appears in the pages of the Bible. Here it is again, Claudius Lystrius to the most excellent governor, Felix, to the most excellent Cratitius, Cratitius, the most excellent Cratitius governor, Felix, Green. Now, what people don't know in history, Felix was something else. Felix, Marcus Antonius Felix, was a governor who came to power in Judea in 52 AD. And according to history, he was not a good man. Let me repeat that one more time. He was not a good man. I have, I mean, as I look at the politicians from the 20th century and now we're in the 21st century, I have, and I have no doubt that somewhere, maybe in the 2300s uh, or 200 years, 300 years from now, people are going to look back at our politicians and say, well, how did that person get in? So you see, we've always had people in power that were somewhat questionable. But here it is. We're to look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh from the Lord who did what? Who created the heavens and the earth. Uh, he was put in power because his brother Paulus was, had influence with the Roman emperor Claudius. Uh, Felix was a cruel ruler who ruled with an iron fist. Meaning he was, uh, the fact that he was called upon to come into his manner, his manner against Paul showed that he was sort of something else himself. Not everybody could deal with an uprising. Uh, just like there's some things that are going on in this country now, you got to meet with some of the wrong people in office, but you got to pray for those people and pray for the situation and pray that the Lord will deal with the situation no matter what, no matter what people say, that the Lord deals with the situation, no matter how logical or illogical the situation is, that the Lord deals with the situation. I pray for this country daily. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to throw any rocks at anybody. I'm going to pray. Man ought to always pray and not faint. Here we are back again. Greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. Coming with the troops, I rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. And in some versions of the Bible, it will say specifically he was a Roman, or he is, excuse me, a Roman citizen, or he is a person bound by Roman law. Now, with this letter, this letter was something else because you gotta understand that people always, how can I say this to you? People always, uh, when they were sending something out to, uh, as a courier or as a letter to people, they would always send something out about the person. They did it in the Babylonian Empire, they did it in the Egyptian and, uh, Empire, they did it in the Macedonian Empire during the time of Philip and Alexander the Great, they did it in the Greek Empire, and here in Rome, they were doing the same thing. So as I said earlier, uh, Lystrius could not send Paul anywhere to Felix unless there was a letter to say, this is why he's going, this is what's going on with him. Hallelujah. Verse 28. And when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before the council. And I brought, verse 29, I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but had nothing charged against him uh, deserving of death or chains. Now, you have to, now, now, Lysus is also covering his own tracks. Now, this is what I found. It doesn't seem like it's a lot, but I just wanted you to know that this is what I found, and this is where we're going with this. Uh, people will do that even today in today's society. They will cover their tracks. They will come back and have different witnesses or different reasons for why they are went a certain way. But praise be to God. Praise be to God. I'm going to give you some of the key that, that's attached to all this as to why this was going away. I'm going to give it to you in just a moment. Hallelujah. So here we are. I found out he was accused concerning the question of their law, but had nothing charged against him deserving of death 
or chains. Verse 30. And when it was told me that Jews lay in wait for the man, I sent him immediately to you and also commanded his accusers to state before him the charges against him. Now as the letter ends, as this legal document ends, then, then like I said, you could not do people any type of way. You have to have legal recourse. It had to be on a tablet or a scroll or a parchment or a vellum. It may, by this time, may have been a vellum. This letter was written out. Here it was. Nowhere in this letter did Lestrius, did he turn around and say, well, we also scourged him. We also beat him. And they, by the way, we've got uh, a group of people who are about to kill him by death. He didn't put that in the letter. The letter was a legal document so if by whatever chance later on they wanted to come back on Lystris, he said, well, wait a minute. I wrote a letter. It's all in the letter. And ooh, praise be to God. That letter is in our Bible today. That's why people don't understand that the greatness of God's word, the magnificence of God's word from Genesis to Malachi to to, to Matthew, to the book of Revelation. Don't let these guys that are running around here telling you, you don't need this in the Bible, you don't need that in the Bible. They're heretics, they're false prophets. God's word, all of God's word, all of, of what, all of, what did I say that? Let me say it one more time. All of God's word is for reproof, it's for doctrine. It's all in the word of God. Stop letting people dissect and tell you what you should or should not be doing. Take all of God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. One more thing about the letters. These letters, these courses, publicans, they were known as official warrants or documents or, or, or diplomas. So this was legal. It was sealed. It was going from one ruler to, a, to, a, to a, another ruler. And there was nothing that could be broken about it. It was a legal document. It was an official warning. It was a, it was a diploma. And thank God for these early Christians. Thank God for the early church. Thank God for the writing that they did. It not only tells us something about the history of the Roman Empire, but it tells us something about the history of the church and the magnificence of the church and the intelligence of the church. Oh, and the spirit of the church. Hallelujah. This this letter, this postal, Lagothia, Lagothia's Trodalia, that meant that it was a postal document. This letter was referred to as Elohim. Elohim, it was, it was official. It was, it was practical. It was legal. It was all it was supposed to be. So if this thing ever went to court, if this thing ever had to go before the Senate, if this thing ever had to go before the high priest, if it had to go before who the Sanhedrin Council, it was legal and it's in the Bible. You guys that are running around here spitting on the Bible, not wanting to preach the whole Bible, preach the whole Bible. Here's something that just shows the magnificent the Bible is. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. This letter, this energy, this, this letter. And it says, farewell. Verse 31. Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Antiprius. The next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and return to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea, verse 33, and delivered the letter to the governor. They had delivered this elogium, this, this letter to the governor, the governor, the council, the uh, patriarchs, the, the council. This is where, why sometimes today we refer to attorneys or lawyers as counselors because they have legal jurisdiction and certain legalistic matters. That's where we get that from. They had delivered it to the, to the uh, governor, hallelujah. And when the governor had read it, he asked, verse 34, what providence he was from. And when he understood that it was from Cilicia, he said, I will hear, verse 35, you, when your accusers also have come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's protria. Brothers and sisters, the thing that was keeping Paul 
alive and together. You gotta understand that the Holy Ghost was still in control of the situation. Even though Paul had been scorched, he had been beaten and been puked, he'd been scorned, but the Holy Ghost was still in the situation. Some of you today go through different things. You ought to let the Holy Ghost be in control of the situation. Back in the 20th chapter of the book of Acts, where it says, do not trouble yourself, for life is in him. Here it says, they say here and in, to the elders of the church, serving the Lord with all humility and tears, and humility and tears, and trials which happened to be me by the plotting of the Jews. They went house to house, but the Holy Ghost was in charge of the situation. Verse 21, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in verse 23, in every city, saying that chains and tribulations of the way we, yes, in this life, Chains and tribulations will await you sometimes. It's not always going to be flying around in a Maybach all the time. Sometimes you may have to catch the bus in the rain, brothers and sisters. But here it is. Here it is. The power of the Holy Ghost is still alive today, brothers and sisters. Down in the verse, it says, race with joy. Finish your race with joy. With joy. No matter what man says or does, finish the race with joy. You may get unhappy sometimes, but finish the race with joy. Here in this letter, here in this Elohim, here, here in this letter, Paul well, had a letter written on him, but Paul was still, as you'll see later on, going to be a witness for the Lord. He was still going to be a carrier of the word of God. He was still going to be a lover of the word of God. He was still going to be a believer in the word of God. Keep on following the Lord no matter what. Run the race with joy. No matter what letters they write on you. No matter what they say about you. No matter what lies they conjure up on you. You keep on running for the Lord.